that's right here. That's where our uh, our main fire protection is. Um, flow switch is obviously a, um, a just a, a sensor of when there's flow in the uh, fire protection, so the sprinkler system. Um, if one of the sprinkler heads goes off, then that thing will sense flow through the uh, the fire protection system and send an alarm back to the fire alarm panel. Tamper switches are on the gate valves. Um, so if the gate valves are changed, the uh, um, if the fire protection is, is shut off by somebody, um, it'll send a signal to the, uh, the fire alarm panel. Um, the, uh, the fire protection horn strobe located above the Siamese connection on the exterior of the building um, is right outside of your uh, your main fire sprinkler assembly. So you've just got a horn strobe that shows, it basically just shows um, the uh, the fire department where they're, where they can hook up to if they need to, to the um, Siamese connection. Um, so if they pull up to your building and they see that horn strobe flashing on the back of the building, they know that if they want to hook up, they need to go back there. Um, I think that's pretty much covers everything. Does everybody, is there any questions on fire alarm? Um, again, I would use these, I don't know if you use these templates or not, or plug them into a family or just draw your circles, but they're easy. Um, I don't think there's anything else fire alarm wise. Is there anything I'm missing, Ken? Uh, flow switches and the, we've got the smoke box, so horn strokes everywhere. Mm -hmm. I think that's about it. Uh, that area was kind of an interesting area because you need more than a horn stroke to cover it. Yeah. Based on the templates that we have. And we're just looking at how these young fellows did it. They have four here in this area. The question would uh, actually from me is if you look at the template, the where they said that cover 20 by 20, I think 30 by 30, 40 by 40, and there's one that's 55 by 55. Which one do you guys use? What, like if you, when you start, because 55 by 55, you only need one or two of them. So is there any really what that template is is, yeah. is uh, Tandela? So that's yeah. that's basically for your visual only um, horns. Obviously, if if you're they're usually pretty loud, um, but you know you can pick different Candelas to have different coverages. Um, some people, some guys, some fire alarm installers will tell you that uh, you know it's better to have. Uh, a bunch of 75s or like two or three 75s rather than one 110 um, okay. just because of you know depending on where you're standing um, you might not catch it um, out of the corner of your eye you know if, if it has a coverage that's behind you so they you know that it, it if you have the coverage with the 110, you're meeting the requirements. But sometimes to use the smaller ones and use more of them, it's just better practice. Okay. Obviously, it costs more money, so okay. contractors might not want to do that. But um, it's more of a best practice type of thing. And then when you get into candelas, um, also like in the in the restrooms, you don't need a 110 candela uh, strobe in there because um, it's a small space, so you can put a 15 or a 30 in there and be fine. And when you get into battery sizing and everything for your uh, for your fire alarm panel, because you need to have a battery backup for your fire alarm panel, um, obviously the larger the candela, the more battery you need because it takes more power. So um, that's another thing that, uh, you know, it depends on how detailed you get into um, sizing everything that, uh, you, you know, you need to size your batteries too. So, okay. um, technology. So I think we kind of talk about, you know, where we want everything pretty detailed. Um, 
data outlets and uh, everybody understands you know the, uh, the the data coming into the, uh, the open office area from floor boxes underneath um, you know we kind of identify each area where we want a printer it's pretty uh, Straightforward. Um, we say we want Cat 5e cable. Yeah. What I told them, to, uh, Julie, to do is uh, this is the symbol that we use for both data, and so we just put every cube that has the data mm -hmm. and a phone in it, and we just went all the way across. Yep. We crossed the whole, you know, in all in the whole areas that needed. So, uh, so this is a phone only. In these, uh, in and these one, no, they didn't do it. These are not how we're going to do it. Well, it kind of is. Okay. That's kind of how um, we have it set up right now. We're, right now, the way we have it set up is it comes out of the floor box, and then because these cubes, and they probably do make cubes that have um, data built into them also, but the cubes that we have have outlets, receptacles built into them. So all you do is bring the power to the cube, but they do not have the data jack built into them. Okay. So what you do is that that bundle of cables comes out of the floor and goes up to the underside of these cubes and spreads out to each desk and we just have a 1900 box mounted to the bottom of each cube or the underside of the oh. desk that has the data jack in it. So really even though they're you know you're showing an outlet at each one that actually is how it is done so that's um, what I would do is I would kind of try to note that how you want it to be installed because you're installing a you know a piece of equipment on kind of a non-permanent um, piece so you note that you want the uh, a 1900 box um, with a, a you know with the right jack and everything on the underside of the desk um, and the cable routed uh, to each location basically so that's I think we have a note that says we're coming from the from underground with a junction box that has mm -hmm. data and yeah, but it doesn't say what we do with the data though. Yeah, you're right. So okay, I always thought we the furniture would be wired mm -hmm. and we order pre-wired data phone power furniture. Yeah, and we just tie it to a, one end. Like I'm said, like yeah. I said, I, I'm sure they make those. Um, but yeah, this, I the table. yeah, this uh, this furniture, you know, was bought in '98 or something like that. So, okay. Um, yes, it has a receptacle built into it, but it did not have the uh, the data jacks or the uh, voice jacks built into it. So. So the electrical contractor will be installing these. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. and we can leave. Okay. Any questions on voice data? Okay. Anything else that I'm missing, Chad? No, I think the only thing I want to pick your mind is on mm -hmm. circuiting the fire alarm system. Because of addressable system right now. Mm -hmm. So there's the initiating device, as I was just telling them, for risers. Uh, for no voltage risers. So I said there's initiating devices mm -hmm. and announcing devices. Mm -hmm. But uh, how many circuits would you guys recommend for this one? Like this has to be added a number of smoke detector here. That smoke detector right now is coming from one circuit, tamper switches, four switches. So I don't know if you, in full station coming, it looks like where it's on, one strobe, one, one strobe, or multiple are tied together and announced So um, my, I guess my point is how many circuits would you bring to all these smoke detectors? Would you put them on one circuit since they're addressable? Would you grab a couple of circuits and throw them on? Uh, would you divide the area to four quarters and fix every quarter? You could, I mean... All of the above? You, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's kind of designer preference. Really, um, when we design a fire alarm system, we actually don't circuit the... the uh, just so you guys know, we... Um, we don't circuit the, uh, the fire alarm system. We lay it out, and then it gets um, our spec um, that we issue with each job. You know, a book spec um, kind of defines 
what we want um, from the fire alarm system, what we want it to do. Um, we obviously show all the devices, and then we rely on the fire alarm contractor, whoever gets it, um, whether it's ECSI or, or if it's a, a, a contractor installing a simplex system or, or something like that, he actually has to do the circuiting and um, go by our spec how we want it done. Um, you know, it, it's just kind of one of those things also, as long as you size your batteries correct, if it makes sense to, you know, the smoke detectors on this side of the building on a circuit, then, you know, smoke detectors on the other side of the building, that's kind of how I would split it up for this building. Okay. Um, but there's no real uh, right or wrong way to do it, so. Okay. Okay. That's what I always struggled is how to lay them out um, mm -hmm. um, you have a power system. You know, I was under the impression if you guys, when this is what we're going to be remembering when we come, if you just cut this into four quarters right in here, and that everything in one quarter would be in one circuit, smoke detectors. I don't think this, if the duct smoke detector, they don't send the signal by itself. I'm not sure it can group them in the same circuit with others. At Every least device smoke, is addressable. with the addressable ones, yep. you just keep busy jamming. Mm -hmm. So we take one core, all, everything in this quarter will be in one circuit, two circuits, three circuits, four circuits for the smoke, for the initiating device, smoke detectors, pulse stations, and so forth. And the same thing for the annunciating devices, three, four circuits to cover the whole area, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. And I'm really not an expert in fire alarm, but I thought that would probably, yeah, from sense. the little that I know, that would cover would give you, you don't overload your circuits, yeah. and give you more zones, I guess. They, um, the uh, indicating circuits, obviously, with the strobe, that's your main draw for power. Yeah. So when you're sizing batteries, that's what you need to, but, you know, smoke detectors, really, they, when you're sizing those circuits, the draw is so little, it's just, um, well, all it's and doing is sending a signal. And Joe, don't they send the 120 to the one outside side me? I thought they powered them. Yeah. Um, they need a circuit 120 or yeah. more power or something. Yeah, that's that usually okay. needs a 120 volt circuit. Yeah, just to power it mm -hmm. and the circuit to, you know, initiating circuit here. Yep. So. Yeah, that's what we're going to line up a couple of speakers. Like, it would be great uh, if the assemblies was here. Mm -hmm. We have uh, templates in the past that came here, and those are the guys specialized in the details of the design of these systems. Unfortunately, we're not able to get them, yeah. so we're stuck with Chad and Joe designers. Mm -hmm. We're designers, we're not experts in the fire alarm system, but we'll get you close to 90% of what yeah. you need, and the 10% will be filled by specialized people who are doing no voltage only. So, Simplex has a pretty decent. Uh, website too for uh, for actually for design too um, so if you check that out uh, notifier is another good one that we use a lot so challenging when you throw that low voltage among everything that we do with a short amount of time mm -hmm. it gets a little bit for you guys to just get a little bit of time overwhelmed at one time because now we're doing schedules mechanical schedules and not schedules and so <clears throat> but that's good. The more the deeper you get into it, the better. Yeah. We have students who graduate from here. Joe knows that they're leading the low voltage contracting right now. Actually, uh, one of them, Max McMillan, Matt McMillan, is going to be here next uh, project. He comes to talk about low voltage in the industrial project, so for low voltage contracting. So he is all what he does is low voltage fire alarm security for him there for a living. So. Yeah, the fact that this project and the next project kind of touch on every yeah. little bit of this um, niche in the world of uh, of design and uh, and contracting, it's you know you have a little bit of everything, so kind of leaves you open to you know a bunch of different career choices. So, any question for Joe, guys? All the speakers been showing up. Speakers, yeah. The yeah. ones that were scheduled. The ones that were scheduled. Yeah. We just have a generator left and then right. Right. 
generator to his left and yeah. and uh, short circuit is going to be. Battery back up. I believe it's the ninety minutes, Jack. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. I think that's right. Ninety minutes. I mean, I'll give it an hour and a half, right? Yeah. Ninety minutes. Yeah. And there's a yeah, 90 minutes, the, the voltage should not drop down to 82% of the rating. And, yeah. and, um, but I think if the initiating devices are running, it's lower than that. Yeah. That's 90 minutes backed up, so you lose, leave, you lose power right now. We have an hour and a half for the battery to maintain the system. But if you have an alarm, you can't maintain the whole industrial for 90 minutes. I think there's something yeah, well, to do. Well, it's such a small building, yeah. too. I mean, everybody's going to be out. Yeah. 15 minutes at the most, yeah. I would say. Yeah. But yeah, that 90 minutes is for no power. Any comments, guys, for Joe? Since Joe's here, anything you want to ask him? So we captured him here. He already drive here about the uh, whole career. Joe is a graduate of the program. You guys have no. He, he did the same thing that you guys did mm -hmm. at a different era. Before Cam, BC. Yeah, he's not one of my victims. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. He's a victim of Ryman. No, not even Ryman. No. Like that. None he, of us have the pleasure of Ryman. The only one he's that's dead. still here that I have was uh, Wagner. Mike Wagner. Oh, and Mike Wagner. Yeah. Wagner, Wagner, yeah. He's my nose. When you were here, also we used to the first year was electrical together, right? Yeah, it was yeah. the same as the same. Thing. We're going back, by the way, to the going same. Back to yeah. That, yeah, just because we're forced. Here, Brian. Yeah. So okay, I know you guys have a lot, a long uh, way to go, so they have to do the schedules, and it's a short week. So, any question for um, Joe before we leave? It's December twelfth still work for uh, coming to our place. Uh, December, it's in the That's schedule, right? It's on the schedule, yeah. yeah. It's in the schedule, it's, uh, it's okay with us. Okay. So, so December 12th, with... we'll have you guys uh, come to our place and kind of check out the building. Um, we have done a little bit of remodeling since this plan, but it's mostly, you know, mostly the same exact building um, that you guys have been working on for uh, the past month or so. Um, so kind of, you know, after you design it, you get to see it see what we did differently. Obviously, you're not going to see a generator. You're not going to see smoke detectors. Um, there's a lot of things that were added into the project um, as, as we went learning uh, yeah. you know, tools or whatever. And Joe, here's where we are, just to give you an idea. This this is work in progress. It's shape one. These guys, team one or team two. Team two, here's the second sheet, already done, uh, risers already done uh, site plan lighting already done uh, lighting uh, floor plan already done and the power is already done too layout and we went to the system we talked about it today already done uh, low voltage need to be redlined um, already done here and then we schedules today is the work on schedule you guys already dropped some schedule seems so uh, the mechanical uh, panel schedule, mechanical schedules is what you already dropped that one? Well, might as well go home and call it a day, huh? What's going on with with you guys? I thought you were the slowest group here. Oops. <laughs> so here's your mechanical schedule. <laughs> I, I like to tease him. And it seems you guys created another one for the lighting because it didn't fit. If it fits, it will be nice to sketch it. Here's my uh, lighting schedule coming from Revit. You guys, what you're working on. And the last thing, we'll throw details at you later on next week. So basically, um, as far as we're concerned, the, the project is almost done Revit-wise. Um, next week will be the last week, guys, that we wrap, wrap this project. So, so it has been a good, uh, good ride. For the most part, guys, we didn't have a lot of issues with Revit, right? Am I right to assume that for the most part, it was an easy ride? Yeah, so unlike we did in the past, yeah, yeah but, uh, better every year. Yeah. Some, yeah. Somehow I noticed that this year because there's only one person give the direction, 
um, everybody's doing it the same. Yeah. Versus if we have two people, like when Nick was here, mm -hmm. he would tell them something and I tell them something different, yeah. and there was confusion. Every day I felt it smoother. Everybody did the same thing, right or wrong, doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> but it did the same thing. Yeah. It made it a smooth transition, it really yeah. did. So, so no, the project is going good. Yeah. So we're redlining today, low voltage, and uh, we're on track. So. Okay, any question guys for Joe before he leaves? Okay, well thank you Joe, Thanks, I appreciate guys. it, yeah, thank you. Let me get you here. Take a five minutes break and I'm gonna redline guys for you. I'm gonna, I can't, I'm gonna get you.